Okay, welcome to section 7.6, and this is on rational exponents. In this section, we're basically going to now bridge the gap between radicals and radical forms of expressions with rational exponential forms. So we're basically going to talk about how we can turn square roots, cube roots, fourth roots, and all that into exponents. And I know I've danced around this subject before in class, because we've talked about the fact that exponents and radicals are inverses of each other, well, now we're really going to look at that relationship in this section, okay? This is a very short video, just going to talk about how to convert from one form to the other. And the key to doing this that I want you to remember is this idea. This is called the flower power rule, what I'm about to show you. Um, I can't say I came up with the name. I've taken it. I'll give her credit where credit is due. I took this from one of my old professors at St. Joe's. Um, she used it in her intro algebra classes when she was a high school teacher. And I've loved it ever since, and I hope you find it convenient to understand what to do here. So let me give you the book rule, and then I'll explain what I mean by flower power with this. So if you have the nth root of x, the way we can rewrite that as an exponent is it now becomes the exponent 1 over n. So whatever the index is, that's the denominator of the fraction. Generally, if you have a root of a power, so the nth root of x to the m, the general rule would be, whoop, spoiling the magic here, the nth root of x to the m equals x to the m over n power. Now, here's where flower power comes in. I'm going to draw a little flower over the exponent. Notice how the top of the flower that you see above ground is always the flower part. And below the ground, what do we have? The root. Now you might see the idea of flower power. So the flower corresponds to the power, m. The root corresponds to the root of the radical. In this case, it's n. So remember, flower power, root, root. And that will help you convert from radicals to fractional exponents and vice versa. Okay? So let's do some of that conversion now. So, we get something like n to the one-fifth power, all right? If you want, you can draw the flower power right now in your notes. The flower is the one, so the power is one. The root is five, so this is the fifth root of n. All right, we'll do another one, b to the one-fourth power. I'm starting with the easier ones where the numerator is just one. This is just the fourth root of b, because it's b to the first. Okay, now let's look at the flower power kind of example. So you've got x to the three-fourths power. So I drew that flower for you. So the flower is the power. So in this case, the power is three. So we're talking about x cubed. And the root is four. So we're talking about the fourth root of x cubed. So that's how we take a fraction into a radical. Let's just try one more. a to the negative five over three. It works for negatives as well. So we get the cube root of a to the negative fifth, because again, the flower is negative five, the root is three, the cube root of a to the negative five. Okay, let's go the other way now. Let's convert to exponential form. So I'm going to give you some radicals, and we're going to write them as exponents. So the fourth root of z is just going to be what? Think about it. z to the one-fourth. All right, a to the fifth, the square root of a to the fifth. Now we're going to do flower power again, but the other way. So the power is five, so the numerator will be five. The root is two, because it's a square root, so we get a to the five halves power. Okay, you have some practice problems in the note sheet, going back and forth from exponents to radicals. Give those a try, and when you're ready, resume the video. Okay, so let's do some evaluating of rational exponents. So we're going to put some numbers in here instead of some letters. So let's do 81 to the negative 1 fourth power. We could actually take fractional exponents of numbers, believe it or not. We're not going to multiply 81 by itself negative 1 fourths times. That makes no sense. But instead, we're going to turn it into a radical, which we know how to evaluate and simplify. So flower power. But before we do flower power... Remember all those properties of exponents we looked at in the last chapter? They're back. 
How do we handle negative exponents? That's right, I hope you shouted at your computer screen. We put it over or under 1 and make it into a fraction, because that's what we're going to do. 1 over 81 to the 1 fourth power. Now we can work with flower power. So the power is 1, the root is 4. So this becomes 1 over the fourth root of 81. All right, well, let's simplify the fourth root of 81. 81 can be factored into three threes, excuse me, four threes, three times three times three times three. I'm not doing the factor tree just to save some time on this video, but you can, if you don't believe me, do the factor tree on your own. Um, if you have an Inspire, I showed you how to factor numbers on the Inspire, whether it's a Cass Inspire or not. If you look at the factorization, we need a four of a kind. Well, we've got four threes, so this just becomes one third. So 81 to the negative 1 fourth power is 1 third, okay? In fact, if you put 81 to the negative 1 fourth power in your calculator, it would give you 1 third as the answer. If you've ever tried doing that before, just, you know, experimenting, can I take fractional exponents? You probably weren't sure why you got that answer. Well, here's the reason why. Because it's actually a square root, well, in this case, a fourth root in disguise. Let's try one more. 32 to the 2 fifths, all right? Well, first step, let me go back a little bit, is flower power. Let's turn this into a radical. So there's my flower. So we're talking about the fifth root of 32 squared, okay? Because 2 is my flower, so the power is 2, and the root is 5. All right, let's do some factoring and bust this up. So 32 squared, first thing I decided to do is, instead of squaring that number and getting a bigger number and then breaking it down. Just think of it like 32 times 32, because that way I just have to do the factoring of 32 once and then just rewrite it a second time and I get all my powers. So 32 is 2 to the 5th. So I've got here 2 to the 5th times another 2 to the 5th. Again, to save space, I'm not going to write two sets of five twos because I kind of already know at this point, because I've become an expert, we're so far through chapter 7, I've become an expert at simplifying fifth roots, I know that the fifth root of 2 to the fifth is just 2. So this becomes 2 times 2, which is 4. So 32 to the 2 fifths power is 4. Okay, I have a couple more examples of evaluating rational exponents numerically. In class tomorrow, we'll go over the practice problems that are on the note sheet, and then we're going to look at some more complicated examples using some of the properties of exponents we looked at in the last chapter to help simplify different radical expressions, different rational exponent expressions, and things of that nature. Because it turns out that all those properties of exponents, they apply whether the exponent is an integer, like we've looked at before, or a fraction, like we see here in this video. Okay, so with that, like I said, finish the practice problems, bring any questions you have to class tomorrow, and I will see you then. Have a good evening.